earning point in the war also happening as we await the spring and a potential offensive fresh one uh, by Putin. Oh, Newsmax CEO Chris Ruddy writing an opinion piece which you can find right now on Newsmax.com talking about Mike Johnson allowing a vote on Ukraine aid saying he believes Ukrainians are dying for their freedom. It's a noble cause that in reality protects us and our freedom. We should send them aid. It continues on to talk about Republicans should give Ukraine 11 more months of aid to survive then President Trump can weigh in and forge a peace deal. He can get the job done. And let's talk about the work ahead. It's my pleasure to bring in Indiana Congresswoman Victoria Sparks, who's also the very first Ukrainian-born member of Congress. Congresswoman, a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Newsline. Thank you for having me. Obviously, it is a turning point in the war. Everyone knows it. We've passed the two years. Uh, and, you know, many people like yourself are worried about it becoming a slush fund. Uh, that's been something you've been particularly concerned about knowing Ukraine and growing up in the area. So I guess the big question is, what, how does this get solved? Well, listen, I actually, uh, in July of 2022, I issued a press release to put pressure on Congress to be proactive, to put pressure on President Biden to have better strategy and oversight of aid and not to have a slash fund where he used Ukrainian aid for a lot of causes with no transparency to the Ukrainian, to the American people, and really no proper strategy. He slow walked the aid, and I think it caused a lot of problems, and I think people are frustrated. But I think at this point, we are where we are. Unfortunately, you know, he was not really being decisive in dealing with Russia, and I don't think president, with President Biden, Ukraine can, you know, win this war, but we cannot let Ukraine loses this war because it's going to be a big defeat for the West and the United States. Russia and, and team up with China to defeat the West and specifically the United States and implications will be significant. So I think we do need force President Biden to secure our border, at least to force some policies like Title 42 remain in Mexico, and also provide lethal aid with proper oversight uh, to Ukraine. And then also we should probably force it to be on loan, because then we have more ability to push on Ukraine uh, mm -hmm. to do the right thing. And obviously, I know you sent a strong message uh, in Munich to European uh, folks to step up and do more as well. I'd like to pivot and talk a little bit about Hunter Biden. And, you know, you made this revealing post on X and some of the uh, things you want to uh, highlight to Americans, because this story seems to be, for some reason, not being as uh, investigated by the legacy media. And you write right here, very strange Hunter Biden took a position on Burisma board right at the same time the UK government opened a money laundering investigation into Burisma's owner. Pressure from VP Biden on the prosecutor general, threats of withholding military aid, numerous investigations against Jaklovsky were abruptly closed. I mean, we've known this for years. Uh, we saw, obviously, Hunter come in last year. Why do you continue to think that the Democrats and, well, I guess this is what it is, Jamie Raskin and your colleagues in the Congress uh, try to say that this is some type of fairy tale? Well, listen, I think it was very interesting for me when we had a question of Hunter Biden. He has, you know, listen, he's not stupid. He has a very good money laundering enterprise, and he's been in charge of it for a while, and his father obviously brings political capital to cover it up for him. But let's think about it, what's happening there. You know, he didn't go to advice like Shell or Chevron or ExxonMobil that were trying to do, you know, business in Ukraine at that time if he really wanted to do something against Putin. He went to advise corrupt politician, corrupt oligarch who worked in Yanukovych pro-Putin administration. Mm -hmm. Think about that. And at a time when the investigation was open in him, he has his father going to Ukraine. Almost the same time, then a year later, you know, he meets with his partners and they're concerned that, you know, investigations are continuing this oligarch. And a few days later after his meeting with the Burisma board, you know, Vice President Biden flies to Ukraine and makes radio statement that you need to do something about prosecutor general yeah. and all of the corruption. So there are a lot of serious questions, and I think that is really a big question, and we need to get to the bottom of it. I think the Vice President Biden was Vice President of the United States when his son was making money from corrupt oligarchs. Yeah, I think Americans now uh, are demanding answers like that as well. Congress